everyone, this is chapter 4, part 4. In this part, we'll talk about statistical significance. So statistical significance means that there is sufficient evidence from the sample to indicate that the true value of the coefficient estimate A hat or B hat is not zero. Okay. So in the example that we that we studied, remember in part three, we did this, we ran this regression. So we found that the coefficient estimate beta hat, beta hat was equal to 4.97191 in this right sales head. Uh, I can't put a head here. SI head equals A head plus B head advertisement spending, right? So B head is found to be 4.97191, uh, right? Is this statistically really 4.9? Is this statistically really equal to, does that equal to a positive number, right? So is it statistically significant or is it statistically, this T is extra, statistically different from zero? All right, so we will conduct something called hypothesis testing. It's a statistical technique for making a probabilistic statement about the true value of a parameter, okay? So, we, let's say we look at different travel agency samples. Sample 1 and 1 has, you know, those seven agencies we looked at. We grabbed another sample from United States. Now you have, let's say, 100 agencies, different agencies. And 3, you have 132 agencies, right? So you're looking at different subsamples, travel agency subsamples. And if you look at these subsamples, you're going to get beta head for each sample. Sample 3, beta head for sample 2. This is called a sampling distribution, beta head for sample 1. Imagine if we do this infinite times, right? What you get is a relative frequency distribution of beta head. This is also called probability distribution function, right? Assume that the true value is equal to the 5. Okay, so the true value beta, true value is 5. So this PDA probability distribution function shows you least square estimates of beta, different beta heads. So as you can see, probability of finding a beta head that is close to 10 is very low. So this is the uh, percentage of the outcome, right, that is going to give you 10 beta head equals to 10 is very unlikely while finding a beta head around and on around 5 the true value is highly likely many more um, uh, many more instances are expected here in this distribution so if you don't know frequency distributions you can google search and learn about that so let's learn about unbiased estimators. Estimates A hat and B hat do not generally equal to the true values. That's okay. So A hat, you're going to find A hat usually not equal to true A. B hat, assume that true B is equal to 5. B hat we found is not equal to 5, right? That's okay. Because A hat and B hat are random variables computed using data from a random sample. And in this previous example, we had infinite sample. So we got this probability distribution function, PDF. All right? An estimator that beta hat is called, it's unbiased if it produces estimates of a parameter that are on average. So the expected value of beta hat. Expected value operator takes the beta i hat i from 1 to n and finds its sample average okay so the estimator is unbiased if it produces estimates of a parameter that are on average equal to the true value of the parameter so unbiasedness is something we're looking for the good news is that the regression uh, technique we use will give us unbiased estimators so next step is to test for statistical significance Here we must determine if there is sufficient statistical evidence to indicate that y is truly related to x, right? If beta is not, in other words, if beta is not equal to 0. If beta is equal to 0, right, look, a plus b, this is y, 
x if beta is equal to 0 then there is no relationship between y and x it looks like this y x this is a y so the relationship looks like this if beta is 0 right y doesn't vary change at all depending on x there is no relationship we don't want that okay so even if beta is equal to zero is it possible that the sample will produce an estimate beta that is different from zero it's a possibility so what we do is we test for statistical significance using what we call t-test or looking at the p-values so in this part part four we'll learn how to conduct a t-test all right so what we have to do is to calculate what we call a t-value first so you're going to grab parameter estimate beta head and also you're going to grab the standard error of the beta head and you're going to divide parameter estimate with the standard error so sp hat again is the standard error of the estimate beta head this is the square root of the variance of beta head so calculating these don't matter we we, we it is beyond the scope of our class so all i need to know is to how to calculate t value i'm going to then compare this t value against the t table and t table critical value all right so then we are going to have some decision rules whether this beta head is statistically different from zero statistically significant so in this case t statistic how do we find it beta head right 4.97 where do i find the standard error of the estimate very simple standard error of the estimate is right here folks so i'm going to, let's clean it up a little bit so my beta head is all right i'm just going to grab this so my beta head is here beta head and the table the results will give you the standard errors so this standard error is right here 1.231 right 4.9 so it's really easy again uh excel gives you even t stat but if you don't have the t stat you can calculate it you're going to grab beta head divided by the standard error but this excel output already gives you the result t stat okay if it doesn't you still know how to do it so 4.97141 uh, okay 4.97191 divided by the standard error 1.23 okay so this is what we see here all right so to find a t statistic or t value divide t value t statistic these are the same things okay so beta head divided by standard error given in regression output 4.04 .04. okay we are not done we have to find the absolute value of this t statistic absolute value means if you see a negative sign turn it into positive absolute value of negative three is for instance three absolute value of three is three absolute value of negative a a if a is a positive number then it's going to be a right absolute value means get rid of the negative sign right compare it we then have to compare it with a t critical value so this is how we perform t-test complete steps use t-table to choose t-critical value okay so now it's talking about a t-table all right you will be given this t-table we are looking for t-critical value with n minus k degrees of freedom for the chosen level of significance all right the critical value of t is the value of t statistic must exceed in order to reject the hypothesis that b is zero so you have your t stat right in absolute value you want to this number to exceed t critical value that i find from table to reject the hypothesis that b is zero i want to reject that beta is equal to b is equal to zero right and this is the decision rule we'll go over that again so i'm just building up slowly so if t value the absolute value of the t value is strictly greater than the t critical value we can say beta is different from zero or b or beta i keep saying beta but it's b 
So B is statistically significant. I clear the screen a little bit. All right. So it says n, n minus k degrees of freedom. Let's learn about what degrees of freedom means. Degrees of freedom is the number of observations of the sample minus the number of parameters to be estimated. So I had seven observations. K was two. Why? Because I'm trying to estimate A and B. Okay. So degrees of freedom will be equal to five in this example. All right. If the absolute value of the T statistic is greater than the T critical value, the parameter estimate is statistically significant, something we want at the given level of significance. Let's learn about level of confidence and level of significance. Determine the level of significance, which is the probability of finding a parameter estimate beta head to be statistically different from zero when in fact it is zero. So these are like level of significance are important because these are the a percentage, this is how I interpret it, percentage of times that I can be wrong, right? 1% of the time, I will find beta head to be different from zero, but 1% of the time, it's actually zero. So 99% of time, I'm doing a good job. So this is great. The lower the level of significance is the better. 5% or 10% is the maximum acceptable level of significance. Type 1 error is when a parameter estimate is found to be statistically significant, right? So you found beta head uh, not equal to zero, but it is, in fact, it is equal to zero. Okay, so this is like an error you can make. Level of confidence is the probability of correctly failing to reject the true hypothesis. All right, so accepting a true hypothesis equal to uh equal to this expression so i kind of went uh ahead of myself level of confidence is basically what's your confidence interval so basically i have one minus right let's say five percent level of significance 0 0.05 level of confidence will be 95 percent so i want to make a type one error Right, I'm going to find this to be statistically different from zero, even though it's zero, one percent of the time. Right, I want to make mistake one percent of time, so that's my level of significance, one percent. So one minus zero point zero one equals ninety nine percent level of confidence. So level of confidence and level of significance are related to each other. They relate to each other as follows one minus level of significance is level of confidence again one percent is really good five percent is really good ten percent is the maximum allowable level of significance which translates to ninety percent level of confidence right i am ninety percent confident that i found beta to be different from zero and it is different from zero okay so this is a classical t table right we are going to look at two tails. This is how you read it. Two tails, 1%, 10% significance, sorry, 5% significance and 1% significance. And this is DF. It says DF here, degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is N minus K, right? Infinite means anything more than, you know, 1000 degrees of freedom. So if you have... 2000 observations your k is 5 your degrees of freedom is going to be 1995 i don't see 1995 so i'm going to look at infinity okay so in the next part we are going to practice about practice a lot on t-test see you then